Done, folks. The talk's about to start. Um, hi, we have Max over here. He's going to talk about uh, Ansible packaging in Fedora Linux and Fedora Apple. Uh, it's not just about Ansible, but also the modules. So, um, good luck to you. Need my microphone, as was said. So, oh God. yeah. Can I take the handheld? <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Uh, so Ansible is a configuration management tool used for managing servers, network devices, and other types of infrastructure. And you can also use it to manage workstations as this one is. Okay, so what components make up the Ansible stack in Fedora? So uh, before we had just one Ansible package that contained many things. It was a core runtime, command line interface tools, and many, many modules for all different types of applications. And recently, well, I guess a couple years ago by now, uh, the Ansible package was split into collections. And if you'd like to hear more about uh, the origins of this, I recommend you watch Kevin's talk from the Fedora 36 release party. Okay, so first we have Ansible Core. Uh, this is the core playbook runtime. Playbooks, as many of you will probably know, are these YAML files where you define the state of your infrastructure in this simple, easy to understand format. Uh, so uh, Ansible Core includes the runtime for playbooks and it also includes command line interface tools such as Ansible for running ad hoc tasks, Ansible Playbook, the cornerstone for running playbooks, Ansible Galaxy, which is a package manager for Ansible content, similar to PIP or NPM and so on. And then there's also a lot of less commonly known tools, like one that I like called Ansible-Console, which is like this little TUI interface, Ansible-Config, Ansible-Inventory, and so on. And then also there's the essential modules, such as DNF for managing packages, and now also DNF5 and copy for copying files to remote systems, and so on. And then also we have Ansible collections. These are packaged units of Ansible content. Uh, these include roles, which are like reusable YAML playbook code, modules, which are uh, code that's executed on remote systems. They're usually written in Python or PowerShell for Windows collection. I know I mentioned Windows at a Linux conference. What a crime. Um, but really, they can actually be any executable file that takes in and spits out the correct uh, JSON blob. And then also there's other types of plugins that run within the controller process, such as connection plugins. Uh, for example, there's the one that we all know and love, the SSH connection plugin. There's one for Podman containers and for Builder. And there's a lot of different cool types of plugins that run within the controller. So how are Ansible collections packaged? Upstream, we have Ansible Galaxy. Uh, each collection has a namespace and a name. Uh, there's reasons for this due to the way it used to be tied to GitHub repositories. So this is a very popular collection, uh, the community-general collection. Um, as we can see here, uh, it's here on Galaxy. You can use the Ansible-Galaxy collection and install command to install it. And then we also package Ansible collections in Fedora, which is pretty unique. Uh, we're one of, I think, the only uh, Linux distributions that does this. So we can see uh, the community general collection transfers to Ansible-collection-community-general. And these versions are actually out of date, so I don't know what's going on with the Fedora packages site. But uh, we can see that collections are packaged in Fedora, Apple 9, and Apple 8. And now we can see all these cool collections that we have packaged in Fedora. I cannot find my cursor, which is just lovely. Uh, there's plenty of different types of collections. Uh, and then most of them are named like this, some of them are not, but we have machine generated provides which are consistent across all collections. And now we have 21 collections in Fedora Rawhide, 14 collections in Apple and RHEL, because RHEL has three or four in AppStream, uh, and 16 in Apple 9. 
When I originally put together this talk, we had nine collections in Apple Nine, which I thought was fun. But then like two weeks before this talk, I decided to package a bunch more collections for uh, an infrastructure project that the Copper team was working on. So that's fun. Um, and then we also have the uh, Ansible community package, which is a bit of a newfangled creation. Uh, it contains a bundle of popular Ansible collections that the Ansible community steering committee curates. And this was kind of meant as a replacement for the classic Ansible package, because once everything was split out, we still wanted to provide our users like a simple batteries included experience, uh, especially for beginners and people who don't want to muck around with a bunch of collection dependencies. Um, so we also packaged that in Fedora. And now, just I don't maintain all of these packages, but I just wanted to highlight some of the other Ansible related content that we have in Fedora. Uh, we have Ansible Lint, which is a linter for Ansible playbooks and roles. We have Molecule, which is a test tool for roles. And then Ansible Compat is a newish library that both uh, Molecule and Ansible Lint use. We have Ansible Bender, which is used for building container images using Ansible playbooks and Builder. And I believe Upstream is looking for additional help with maintenance, so if anyone's interested. Uh, and then we also have Aura, which is a tool used for recording Ansible playbooks, and it makes them easier to understand and troubleshoot. And this provides an Ansible callback play, uh, plugin, which sends your playbook data into the database, and then it's accessible via a nice Django web interface. Uh, and then we also have Vim Ansible, which is, provides syntax highlighting for Ansible playbooks, which I really like. Um, and then back to collections, uh, we have Ansible-Packaging, which is a package that provides RPM macros and generators for packaging Ansible collections. Again, you came to this conference, so you must expect to hear the word packaging a lot. Um, so now some of our macros, which I maintain along with Neil Gampa, uh, we have Ansible Collection Build, which runs the Ansible-Galaxy Build command to uh, build the Ansible Collection Artifact Tarball thingy. Uh, and then we have Ansible Collection Install, which is run in the Install spec file section. Uh, and that uh, runs the ansible-galaxy install command to install the previously built collection artifact. And it also sets up some other automation for later in the build process. And then we also have ansible test unit, which runs the ansible test units command. This macro should have had an S at the end, my mistake. Um, and then uh, this is used for running the collections uh, unit tests. Ansible provides three different, has three different types of tests, which are all orchestrated by the home built Ansible dash test commands. So there's unit tests, which are what we run with an RPM builds. And then there's also integration tests, which is where you write playbooks uh, to run your Ansible modules and then check that they work correctly within the playbook. And then we also have Ansible Test Sanity, which is basically linters. I wish they would change that name, Sanity, but oh well. Um, and then we also have some other macros that we use during the build process. So now let's talk about generators. So uh, the Ansible packaging uh, generators creates uh, the appropriate dependencies on the version of Ansible core that a collection needs. And also it can handle uh, dependencies between collections. So for example, the AWX collection might depend on the net common collection for some of its utility code. So uh, it would specify that in the Ansible metadata, and then our generators would pick it up and generate the appropriate dependency based on these machine readable provides that we generate. So now this is a fun one. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about Ansible versions. Uh, so in Fedora 39, we have Ansible Core 2.15, uh, and we have Ansible, which is the bundle uh, version 8, and each Ansible version depends on a specific major version of Ansible Core. Uh, you'll notice that uh, Ansible Core does not use semantic versioning. It predates that, while Ansible, uh, we decided to adopt semantic versioning for that. Um, and then in Fedora 37 and 38, we have 2.14 and 7, and uh, the community packages are supported for a much shorter time period than Ansible core versions are, so this is unfortunately uh, already end of life. 
and uh, the schedules, uh, release schedules for Ansible and Ansible Core clash a little bit with Fedora because they tend to be released around the same time as Fedora releases. So in some releases, we've been able to integrate the newest version, while in other releases, we have not. Uh, so now we're going to talk a little bit about Apple. Um, we spend a lot of time maintaining Ansible and Apple. So uh, uh, Ansible Core is supported by Red Hat for a small set of use cases, and it's available in the app stream repo. And then in Apple, we provide Ansible. So in RHEL 8.8 .8 .8 and 9.2, uh, there's 2.14 and 7, and then uh, in Senta Stream, which will become 8, which will become 8.9, they have 2.15 and 8, and due to some shenanigans which are beyond the scope of this talk, uh, Senta Stream 9 has 2.14, and it will have 2.14 for the rest of the RHEL 9 life cycle, while Senta Stream 8 will keep being updated. Um, and now another little wrinkle that we've had for Apple is Python versions. Ansible Core is a bit picky about what uh, Python versions that it uses. Uh, so in RHEL, it tends to use these alternative Python stacks, which don't have as many things packaged for it and are supported for a shorter period of time. Uh, and I've been able to work with members of the Python main team to make sure that all of the uh, macros for Python packages were able to work with uh, these alternative Python stacks. Uh, so now, what makes uh, Ansible packaging in Fedora special? I think it's special at least, but I'm of course biased. Uh, so we provide Ansible collections as RPMs, which is something unique to Fedora, and then we also provide the Ansible bundle so uh, users can pick whether they want the smaller set of individual Ansible collections that they know they need or if they want the quite large uh, Ansible package that has everything and they're able to mix and match because the individual standalone collections and the Ansible bundle don't conflict each other. So maybe you want some collections which are part of the bundle and then one collection maybe isn't part of the community package. So you can install that separately and I really like this because depending on a user's preferences they can choose whichever path they prefer. And then another thing we do is we uh, do a lot of cleanup on the Ansible package because it's a combination of like a hundred different upstream collections and they tend to have a lot of dot files and test files and development scripts. Uh, so we clean these up from the Fedora package. Uh, you can see some of the code we have for that in Diskit. It's a bit extensive and we have been able to upstream some of this work but not all of it. And then another thing we do is given Fedora's uh, first principle, uh, we tend to support new Python versions before Upstream does and we work closely with them and we backport patches as needed. And then the other thing is we're really involved in Upstream. I'm a member of the Ansible Community Steering Committee and I help co-maintain our Upstream build tools. Uh, we all submit patches to Ansible Core and Collections so we can participate in Upstream and also we're involved in releases and community documentation. So finally, how can you help? Uh, we're always happy to have more folks uh, who want to maintain collections or help maintain the existing ones. I believe there is a uh, review package hack fest tomorrow, so I'd be happy to sit down with anyone who's interested during that tomorrow. Uh, we're also always uh, interested in helping with testing Bodhi updates, especially in Apple, and just generally quality assurance. Um, and then also some of the new Ansible dev tools, such as Ansible Builder and Ansible Navigator, are not yet packaged, mainly because I didn't have the time to do it and I don't personally have a use case for it, but I would like to see these in Fedora eventually. And then also I would be interested in getting Fedora Execution Environments, which is not a good name, but um, Ansible Execution Environments are containers uh, which are used for running Ansible playbooks and uh, instead of running it, you know, just on your regular system. So I would like to get some of these set up which use Fedora packages and our Fedora container images. 
So I'd like to plug uh, the Ansible packaging rooms on Matrix and IRC. We have a lot of different distributions who are involved in the package community. Uh, Kevin, David, and I are in there, and then we also have people from the CentOS configuration management SIG. Uh, we have people from Void Linux, Arch Linux, a couple different distributions, and it's, uh, I really enjoy uh, collaborating with different distributions and working together with them. Uh, and then we also have the Ansible Community Room, which is where uh, the Ansible Steering Committee meets uh, every Wednesday, and we also have some other general discussion there. So I'd like to thank everyone for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions as best as I can. Any questions? Oh, and then also uh, here's a link to view the slides, and I'll be uploading these uh, to the sketch page after the talk.